Greetings. Thank you for joining me on this episode of a Scribe Scribbles podcast. Today, I want to talk about online grammar tools, wrapping up our three-week grammar episodes. So stick around, find out why I hate these things. Let us start off with the fact that if you were to go to your favorite search engine and type in free online grammar checking or something similar, you would get thousands of results. There are online grammar checkers out the wazoo and they all pretty much fucking suck to be honest with you. But let's start with some of the more popular but smaller ones. Uh, There's Grammar Check, Virtual Writing Tutor, Small SEO Tools. I mean, the list goes on and on. But here's the problem. Even though they sound promising, we're going to check for all of this stuff. We're going to do all of this stuff. They all follow a set of rules. And these rules are scripted in. These rules are encoded into the back end of the website. And they are not very flexible. And as far as writing goes, we really have no rules. Creative writing doesn't follow the suit of a formal essay. So, unless you're writing a formal email, a small term paper, an essay, or maybe a resignation letter to your boss, these smaller ones aren't really going to help. And sure, they're going to point out where you have a run-on sentence or where you missed a comma after the word however. They are not going to be able to give you what you are looking for your novel the draft that it's in the state that it's in it needs a careful touch it needs an understanding it needs somebody or something that understands what it is that you're trying to say and provide you with the correct tools to say it how it needs to be said But the smaller grammar tools that you're going to find, they don't have the funding. They don't have the backing to incorporate these things that we need. They don't have multiple tool selections, suggestions, and enabling and disabling certain aspects. You don't have the opportunity to select the style type. You want to write with Chicago, APA, MLA, IEEE, you get whatever is encoded based on whoever made that site or that online grammar checker, what they choose to follow. And it may not be what you choose to follow, but that's what you're going to be stuck with. The online tools look at the text that you paste in their little input box for what it is. Text. It's going to determine where your punctuation is and it's going to follow the coded rules and offer a small suggestion on how to fix it. The online grammar tools, the the cheaper ones, the free ones, the lesser known ones, they're not any better than what's already built into your word processor. If you use Microsoft Word or something like that, there is a built-in grammar check. And it's not the greatest, but it will get the job done. These online tools are the same thing, except now you have to either upload or copy and paste your text. Save yourself the hassle. 
But let's move to the big two. There are two online grammar tools out there that are very well known. Grammarly and Scribbins. And these two are only slightly better. In fact, even Scribbins on their website admits that they are only 10% or I'm sorry, 10 times better than the built-in grammar checker of Word. But 10 times is still better. But, you know, they have their websites, they have their little pop-ups and suggestions and they make it pretty. You get pop-ups that show up with the grammar rule and what it means and why it should be corrected. But it's still only slightly better than what's built into your word processor. It's still only slightly better than the rules you remember from fourth grade when you were learning how to put paragraphs together first time you wrote an essay and let's face it you're writing a novel you're writing a screenplay you're redoing somebody's website you're ghostwriting an article you're not really worried about how you cite your sources you're not having a bibliography page all that shit can go we don't need it Grammarly really is at the bane of my grammar existence. Grammarly doesn't do jack shit unless you pay for the premium. And even then, you're left with problems, errors, and under their new interface that was released recently, a lot of frustration. When you go through the check and and you get the pop-up suggestion, oh, change this word to this word, rewrite this sentence this way, maybe it's not what you want. Now before, you could go into Grammarly, put the cursor on the text, highlight, delete, retype in something else, it would check that something else again. Now, once you highlight or delete or type any word, that pop-up suggestion disappears and it moves to the next one. So as you start typing, now you're in a completely different paragraph or part of your document, which now you have to either go back and figure out where you were or do control Z until the original pop-up suggestion comes back over and over again and it's frustrating as hell Scribbins will let you make that correction but they will reload and recheck the entire document so if you don't do what they suggest and you make a correction on your own that is most likely better now you have to recheck the entire document and if you've skipped over some or ignored some suggestions they're just gonna show up again are these tools are they helpful yeah they they are I'm not gonna sit there and say don't use them at all but they are not as helpful as you want them to be They'll fix your improper use of commas or run-on sentences. But novel writers, copywriters, ghost writers, we need more. And for all the money and all the updates and all the checking, these tools can be cheated. I had a client one time in my copywriting days that demanded everything that I turned in to him came with a certificate of zero errors from Grammarly. So I made a Grammarly account and I did the 
copywriting changes and I uploaded the web pages and the files to Grammarly and went through their suggestions and laughed at most of them. And the first time I sent it off, he wrote back to me and said, this isn't good enough because Grammarly, the certificate that I sent him, showed that it was only at 97%. Well, I didn't really make any corrections, but he wanted to see it at 100%. Zero errors, zero plagiarism, zero everything. And I don't know if you know this or not, but as soon as you're on Grammarly, as soon as you click that little X or you click the ignore button, the pop-up and suggestion goes away. And if you don't make any corrections at all and just ignore all the suggestions, all of a sudden you have a zero error, 100% certificate. As a writer out there, I don't suggest you do that. But as the clients out there, you should be aware that if you make these ridiculous demands on your writers and your copywriters, it doesn't mean shit. There's going to be ways around it. And I guarantee you that if my heading or my two sentences worth of introductory text on your web page need to be grammatically correct, you're not letting me do my job. Grammar rules are rules, and rules were meant to be broken. If you want to use online resources, go ahead and use them. But they're not the answer. The answer is to learn grammar. Study Strunk and White's Elements of Style. Go to Google and type in what it is you're worried about that you did wrong, and look for the answer from Grammar Girl. Get Grammar Girl's books and read them. Read her online advice and listen to her podcast. If you want to know whether you need to use into or in to, look it up and learn. Learn what the difference is and why we have this option. If you're going to write, you need to get better at grammar. And then realize that the rules are meant to be broken, especially in copywriting, especially in copywriting. What you need to do is trust an editor. You're going to be using one anyway, and a great editor will challenge you. They will help you grow. Unless you share an office with them, you won't ever hear them laugh at you. But don't rely on scripts and artificial intelligence to infer meaning and dialogue and inflection and the point you're trying to make with the words that you do choose to use, with the punctuation that you do choose to use. An online script isn't going to be able to determine all of these things, all of these factors that go into making writing the powerful resource that it is learn as you go get better at grammar so that you can more effectively use your words to convey the meanings that you need them to convey and then hire the editor anyway that's going to wrap up our grammar three week episode next week we'll talk about something more fun but until then have fun and write words <laughs>